The Fiendsmith format is approaching and some are more happy about that than others. I myself, I personally like the Fiendsmith engine. If both players can play, it's actually quite fun and skill intensive. That is the big if though. If you can't play because Fiendsmith is just way too oppressive going first and you are going second, then I will promise you that you won't like the format in that moment. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of variance. You can't always go first. So what are the solutions if you are going second? Given that you already know everything regarding Fiendsmith, so you can completely go full combo and play through a lot of hand traps if you go first. A lot of people in general tend to agree that this format is still going to be a hand trap heavy format. And at first glance that makes sense. I mean, if it worked before, what does Fiendsmith change? Well, Fiendsmith makes it in general way more unlikely that the low impact 1 for 1 hand traps like Mona, Vela, Imperm or Ash, that they can stop the opponent. Imagine that you play against Snake Eyes pre Fiendsmith, so before the set drops and you have two or three hand traps in hand. Sometimes, if you played a lot against Snake Eyes, you will know that they can just extend past those two or three cards and go full combo. And then you basically lost immediately because in that moment you are not beating the Snake Eyes end bot with two or three cards. Like, that's not happening. And now imagine to all the Snake Eyes extenders, which bonfire literally everything, one additional extender to it. Fiendsmith. And I can't tell you that enough. The whole Fiendsmith combo costs literally nothing. If they perform the whole Fiendsmith combo after all of that, they can literally just normal summon Snake Eyes Ash. So you, you need to have a lot of hand traps, way more than before. And trust me, you will not win anything going second if they can play through two or three hand traps. Fiendsmith just cooks you. So yes, in theory hand traps aren't bad, they can still stop the Fiendsmith opponent, but statistically seen, it's not likely. It's basically the second big hand trap war and I'm not here for it. But what are the other solutions? I mean, we don't have any other choice, have we? Well, there are board breakers, but you already know that they too come with a heavy risk. The Snake Eyes end board doesn't really change, they just get additional board presence thanks to the Fiendsmith cards. So Bot breaker shouldn't be better now than they were before, right? I thought about that a lot and I playtested the format a lot. I mean, I even have my Yubel Euros list cooked up and ready to go basically. I can't leak that, I hope you understand. And I can tell you so much. Bot breakers are better now. The problem with bot breakers are that Snake Eyes just has insanely high follow-up. So even if you manage to Dakruder them and break their board, that costs you a lot of resources and most of the times your end board won't be able to stop the following turn the opponent has. That changes, especially if you play Jubel in the following format, since Jubel can play in general a lot better through interruptions than Snake Eyes can. Since the power level of basically every deck that plays Fiendsmith is a lot higher now, Jubel's 2, you are able to break the opponent's board, in that case it's Snake Eyes, and put up a bot yourself strong enough so that the follow-up doesn't really matter. Something that wasn't possible before that, you just couldn't do that. If you as a Yubel player use Dark Ruler on Snake Eyes and break their board, play through one or two hand traps, your end bot won't be strong enough to beat their follow-up. It's just not happening. With Fiendsmith you are able to, especially in combination with maybe one or two board breaker, which isn't that unlikely to draw since you don't play that many hand traps if you are focused on bot breaker, you can easily break the bot and push out a, an end bot yourself that is strong enough so that the opponent cannot break that. Taking the bot breaker approach requires you to have a very high understanding of your deck and a very high skill level in general, so keep that in mind. And don't forget that Dice IRA can under some circumstances negate cards like Dark Ruler and Droplet since it's not reacting to a card, it negates cards on the field in general. You have the mirror match and your opponent activates chamber. They can then chain Dice IRA to the chamber to negate the Dark Ruder, for example. But if you have a second bot breaker, for example Dark Ruder and Droplet or maybe Talents to bait something first, then it gets spicy. So the hand trap approach and the bot breaker approach both have risks attached to them. I do think that's the reason why the opinions are a little bit split on that topic. Some are definitely saying, okay, hand traps are 100% better, 
Some are saying maybe not. So it's difficult to draw a conclusion. If you are playing hand traps, the chances that your opponent can just play through them after Fiendsmith releases are way higher than before. And even now, without Fiendsmith, it's a big gamble if you can stop Fe um, Snake Eyes with your hand traps. So it's it's way more luck dependent now. In theory, one hand trap can stop a bad hand from your opponent, but you have to think to yourself, how often will that happen? I can tell you that, not that often. On the other hand, we have Board Breaker, which you only may need one or two of if your hand is full of gas, but you need to be a way better player for that because you need to understand both decks 100% in order to beat the end board, beat the follow-up and put up a board yourself strong enough that it's not beatable anymore. I can see both arguments to be honest. I don't think there is a right or wrong like I mentioned in that case and you just have to follow your gut feeling. Speaking of board breaker. Let's make a tier list. The first one is Super Poly and I'm not the biggest fan of it because thanks to Fiendsmith the end bots are mixed in attributes and typing, so every time you resolve Super Poly, it feels like it has low impact and combine that with the cost of discarding one card and the need to give it basically 2 to 3 extra deck spots makes it a meh card and it's only in meh and not in don't because as an interruption if you go first it's broken but as a bot breaker no. Book of Eclipse. I mean, it recently saw some play in selected decks that can utilize it in more ways, for example to dodge imperms or stuff, but as a board breaker post Fiendsmith, it's just not worth it, I'm sorry. I don't even think it's better than Super Poly, so just don't. It's not worth it. There are way better options to choose from to break boards than that card. Lightning Storm. And honestly, it might surprise you, but they are kinda good, even though there are a lot of Omni Negates in form of Arudras and Dice Iray running around, I think it's worth it. Thanks to one deck everyone seems to forget about, but gets a huge power boost with Fiendsmith, being Rescue Ace. I personally believe a lot of people will try to top with Rescue Ace, and even in the OCG currently, it's topping. One Fiendsmith is the full Rescue Ace combo, and Rescue Ace is kinda scary, and Lightning Storm and Feather Duster they can keep them in check and on top of that, if you combine that with other bot breakers I will discuss later, they can even be good against everything. Now we have Cosmic Cyclone, which kinda fits into the same niche as Lightning Storm and Feather Luster, but with a lot less impact. I do think the utility that Cosmic Cyclone gives you in being able to cite it going first makes it playable in the format. I mean, it's good to out specific cards like Skill Drain or maybe to interrupt you Bay, which to be honest, I wouldn't recommend you to do that since they can just extend past that, especially with Fiendsmith now. But in theory, you can side it in going first to hit continue spells, field spells, stuff like that. It's okay. If it wouldn't have the utility to be usable going first, I would probably put it into this tier, but it's a good card. Econ is in an interesting spot. It's definitely a cool card. It has one of the best artworks in Yugi's history. But I do think if you can choose Board Breaker and you go second against Fiendsmith, that Econ isn't your first or second or even third choice, to be honest. The power of the format is just way too high for Econ to be good. Even though you can dodge target negation and you can set it going first. It's it's not worth it. Change of Heart is interesting. Of course, it's similar to Econ, but Econ has the upside that you can set it going first, which makes it, in my opinion, a lot better than Change of Heart. But taking control of your opponent's monsters is, in general, in the current format, very good. The problem with that is, or are, Omni Negates. You have to fight off Dice Iray, Varudras, or maybe even other stuff before you can resolve Change of Heart. So, in combination with maybe other stuff, it's good, but on its own it's very meh. The reason why both Econ and Change of Heart are only in the meh tier, even though if you pair them with certain other bot breakers they can be really impactful, is that we have another card in the format that basically does the same thing, but its utility is just above the roof. And that of course is Talents. I mean, do I even have to explain that? Talents is very good. If you go second, it's a must react for your opponent. If you go first, you can punish any hand trap. Talents is basically the better version of Econ and Change of Heart. If you want to play Bot Breaker or even if you don't, 
Talent is a consideration, one of the better cards in the format. Bro, to be honest, stop coping. Tributing for cost in form of Kaiju and Lava Golem, it's not worth it. You will lose. You will lose after you do that, literally. Kurikara, though, I do think it's it's basically in the mat tier above Super Poly, but if you play a deck that can search her, so basically Snake Eyes, it can be kinda good. I mean, it can tribute if you use it correctly or if you can use it correctly, you can tribute the whole board basically away. But that requires you to play into the board first and for your opponent to activate everything. So maybe I will put it still in the mat here. But definitely leaks better than Kaiju and Lava Golem in the current format. By the way, one addition to talents is that don't forget that you can't target Dice Eye Ray with Econ and Change of Heart, but talents doesn't target. One additional point that just makes it a lot better than those two. If you can grab a card like Fusion Duplication in Branded for example, so if you can utilize Thrust in multiple ways, it's definitely in the good department. If you solely want to play it for the bot breaker aspect, it's in the meh department, solely for the reason that I don't think you often get the chance to resolve that card. I mean literally just play talents, it's that simple, but I can admit that it's way better than everything else in the meh tier, so Maybe it's still good. It's good. Evenly matched is definitely a good card. It's one of those cards that if you pair them with other ones, for example Droplet or Dark Ruler, it's devastating. The only reason why I'm hesitating to put it any higher is that on its own, if you want to bait an Omni Negate, for example with Lightning Storm, if you want to bait an Omni Negate, you just use Lightning Storm and they have to negate that. With Evenly, you have to give up your battle phase and I don't think that's a good feeling at all. So considering all of that, I would still put it maybe below Lightning Storm. But if you can resolve it, it's definitely, it has a lot more impact. Okay, for some reason I can't change the order anymore, but Droplet and Dark Ruler are definitely the best board breaker in the current format. Both cards can shut down entire end boards on their own. And if you combine them with other cards, for example, you activate Droplet in reaction to an activated monster effect, so Talents is life, or you use Dark Ruler and then Lightning Storm, they can even get a lot more impact. They are also the only ones that if they resolve, you have a fighting chance alone with your engine. Those two board breaker are definitely the best ones in the current format, but don't forget, that tier list is only based on Fiendsmith. It's not to beat Rogue deck number 6 or number 7 or something like that. If we consider everything, I do think that Super Poly is a lot better, probably up here, but then that tier list wouldn't make any sense because, trust me, if you are in a big event, you will most likely more often than not face Fiendsmith. And if we consider that, I do think the tier list is fine. Oh boy, a lot is happening in the upcoming weeks, especially for Ubel players. I mean Ubel in Master Duel, Ubel Fiendsmith in the TCG, European Championship, North American Championship, all at once. Which is kinda stressful, but at the same time also exciting. See ya.